On this week's show, we're going to recap some of my best sales so far for 2023. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to episode number 191 of the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast, as always, because it never changes. My name is Ryan, and I will be your host. I am a full-time reseller, part-time YouTuber, and podcaster working out of my home here in the greater Cincinnati area, and this channel is all about the flip life. We've got, I've got just one little news update that just dropped, actually, earlier today, um, and then we're going to get into a pretty hefty what sold recap. I Because I have been AWOL for a while, we haven't recapped any sales for 2023, so I've got I think 18-ish items to share with you that have sold so far this year here at the Galaxy that I think are worth sharing with you, that things that you might want to be on the lookout for. Before we get into that, uh, man, it has been a week <laughs> uh, here at the Galaxy. I had every intention of recording this show actually last weekend, but I came down with either the flu or food poisoning or I don't know what, but I was in no condition to do much of anything for two or three days. And then uh, on top of that, we had a power surge and outage here at the homestead. And when the power came back on, my primary video editing PC unfortunately did not. So I'm working on kind of a makeshift setup here with a real antique laptop. So if you're watching on YouTube and the video is a little bit choppy, that's why I'm working with some really old stuff here, waiting for parts to hopefully get my main rig back up and running. So with that all being said, I did want to take a moment to thank everyone who did reach out uh, or commented either on the video or messaged me on Instagram or at galaxycds at gmail.com about last week's episode where I kind of talked a little bit about where I'm at in kind of my mental state. I really appreciate everybody who reached out and was very supportive and, and shared their stories with me and if you were on YouTube, obviously with anyone else who might be reading those comments, it was uh, it was very touching and heartwarming to see all that. I did want to give one special shout out to the one person who disliked last week's video. <laughs> uh, and I say that actually in all sincerity, sincerity because it was actually a pretty good benchmark for me because as I've been dealing with this, man, over the last year or so, uh, a dislike on a, a video of this episode would just send me into a bit of a tailspin uh, for no good reason. There's, I mean, there's no rational reason. Uh, the channel's got like a 98.9% .9 like ratio. But man, I would get one dislike and I would just obsess about it for days. And I mean, it would really bother me. And this time it really didn't, it didn't really affect me at all, which I, I took as a good sign that I am in fact uh, making some progress here and, and feeling a little better about things. So to that one person who uh, chose to dislike last week's video, uh, a, a sincere heartfelt thank you for giving me an opportunity to kind of benchmark my progress in uh, my ongoing quest to get my stuff together. So with all of that out of the way, let's hit this one bit of reselling news. News updates. So Bonanza, who is a site that I probably not a lot of you sell on, but I talk about them from time to time. They're usually good for me for two or three sales a month. Nothing really fantastic, but it's essentially all free money. Uh, um, obviously, they do charge fees, but there's no additional fee to list there. Um, listings just sync from my eBay store, so it's pretty straightforward. So it's a site that I use and do recommend, and they made an announcement today that Bonanza.com is now Bonanza worldwide uh hello bonanzlers uh that's a <laughs> uh, i'm not sure i like being called that actually but anyway we hope your 2023 is off to a great start we have some exciting news to share with you our community effective on march 9th 2023 alloy and bonanza chief executive officer bill harding has sold bonanza.com to quincy Faison under the newly established company bonanza worldwide llc Quincy will have complete responsibility for the Bonanza business, including product and seller strategy, development priorities, and support. As you know, in recent years, Bill has gradually stepped back from day-to-day -day operations as he works to build the tools that can help medium-sized operations like Bonanza. 
maximize their productive output. Bill will transition to his full time, his full attention rather to the his company's exciting new projects, Ample Note, which is a task and note taking program, and Get Clear, which are development developer metrics and Git analytics. The transition in Bonanza leadership, they point out, is happening at a great time for Bonanza and its sellers, but you likely wonder what this means for you, a seller and community member. According to Quincy, our plans for Bonanza is to continue to develop world-class features for our sellers, but we are going to shift our company to be more marketing focused. So this might actually be a great time to consider joining over on Bonanza if you're not already. There is an affiliate link in the show notes in the description below. If you're interested in giving Bonanza a try, uh, please use that link and uh, sign up and see what you think of Bonanza. Like I said, it's it, once you're synced up with your eBay store, it's pretty straightforward. You really don't have to do much of anything. And it again, it's not big money. It's a couple of sales a month for me with 9,000 <laughs> listings. Uh, but hey, uh, a few bucks is better than no bucks. Uh, what else do they say here? We're going to drive more traffic. We're going to embrace social media platforms like Instagram and TikTok, and we're going to help our sellers produce more videos to get more eyeballs. We're going to give our sellers more tools to help them run their business on and off platform. We are creating a DSP to allow our sellers to invest in pen point marketing activities to reach their potential buyers at an affordable rate. And finally, we are creating a lending marketplace that allows our sellers to borrow working capital to invest in revenue generating activities that structure the payback strictly based on revenue generated that month. So kind of like the PayPal credit deal. So big plans for the folks over there at Bonanza. Again, if you're interested in checking it out, there is an affiliate link down below. Please take a look at that and uh, have a look, see over at Bonanza and see what those folks are up to. That's all I've got for you on the reselling news. There has been a few things kind of over the couple of months that I was missing here. Probably the biggest one, and I, I may eventually develop a, an episode just around this, but Amazon, uh, it was uncovered, is now keeping 50% of all of their third-party sellers' revenue, which is an absolutely enormous chunk. I don't. I posted it over on Instagram, um, at Galaxy CDs Rocks, if you're not a follower over there and asked how Amazon sellers were doing. I got a few people that commented that it's pretty rough over there to make money right now. Uh, unless you've got fantastic margins, Amazon is a tough, tough place to be at the moment. With that, let's get into some what sold. So like I said, this is a pretty hefty recap. I think there's 17 or 18 things here. Uh, I weeded out a lot of stuff there. There are probably some things that theoretically would have made a normal weekly event, uh, but did not make this kind of 2023 so far recap. So we're going to start off here with uh, a sale over on eBay. Abominable Snowmen Legend Come to Life by Ivan T. Sanderson. This was a first edition hardcover with its dust jacket from way back in 1961. I had this listed for $49.99 plus shipping or best offer. Uh, received an offer of $42.50 on it, and I went ahead and sold that. This was purchased as part of a big lot of books that I own for about $0.16 cents a piece. Uh, another book, this one over on Etsy, The Theory of Public Finance, A Study in Public Economy by Richard Musgrave. This is from 1959. Again, it's a hardcover. It's essentially a textbook, uh, riveting reading, I'm sure. But uh, this went out on a 10% off offer, $47.99 plus, again, media mail shipping. So old textbooks, as I've talked about before can be worth taking a look at. So if you're out and about and you see a shelf full of old textbooks, take a moment, if you're so inclined, to take a look and see if there any is anything there that might be of value. This was something I had picked up at an estate sale for a dollar. I've had it for quite a while. Uh, they're not necessarily super fast flips, but they can bring pretty decent money. Back over to eBay. This is one I picked up just recently. Uh, Black's Law Dictionary with Pronunciations, 5th edition hardcover from 1979, uh, put out by West Publishing. So I, as I do these big lots of books, I end up with some stuff that I see others selling. And I talked about this over on Instagram as well recently for 
two or three dollars with free shipping and that's just not my business model because there's no money <laughs> uh really to be made there so i don't mess with those kind of things and sometimes i will build lots if i have two or three books by the same author but a lot of times what i will do is just donate those books so there is a local uh, religious based thrift store. They do work in the community with at risk youth. So I donate a lot of books over there and I have made purchases there as well. The last time I was there and I dropped off some books, I just spent 10 minutes kind of going through the shelves to look to see if there was anything that caught my eye. And this book did, I paid one whole dollar for it. Black's law dictionary, uh, fifth edition from 1979. So, uh, a worthwhile cause and, they got it donated. They made a buck and I made 43. <laughs> uh, this is part of the lot of stuff that's on consignment actually right now from my brother. As I talked about a couple of months ago, he has a warehouse and he had acquired some merchandise from someone who had stored things there that had passed on. This is a 1966 Whitman Superman card game. It was a 45 card set came with its plastic case. They were actually in pretty reasonable condition, not great, not mint, but in pretty solid shape. And with the case, I had them listed for $54.99 plus shipping or best offer. I got an offer of $46 for those and went ahead and sold them. Uh, that situation right now, those the cost of goods sold for me essentially is 35% of whatever the net profit after fees and shipping is. So this I'm not even going to attempt to do the math live here because I'm no Einstein. <laughs> uh, but it ended up being a pretty nice sale. These were part of a big lot that I purchased. I owned these for, gosh, I don't know, maybe a nickel a piece. Uh, 29 vintage Monarch Notes study guide books. So these were kind of like the Cliff's Notes type books. They're, these were all on literature for the most part, so Shakespeare, Dickens, uh, a bunch of old stuff like this. Monarch notes. They were individually, they looked like they were worth two or three bucks free shipping, which again, as I mentioned, is not my business model. But I saw that there had been a couple of lots of them that had sold. So I decided I was just going to throw all of them into one lot and see what I could do. I listed these for $58, so essentially $2 a piece plus customer paid shipping. Uh, even though they were just in acceptable condition and somebody bought them almost right away. So that ended up being a pretty nice flip. 29 of those at a nickel a piece is at about a buck and a half and it turned into $58. So I'll take that all day long. Back over to Etsy, uh, a book from a, another big bulk purchase. These, this one I own for about 16 cents as well. Pearl S. Buck, East Wind, West Wind. This was from the... I want to say it was the Reader's League of America from 1930. It was a hardcover uh, in really, really great shape. This sold on Etsy again for $64.99. This went, I believe, to Canada. So this was an international order with a whopping $22.23 in shipping, which is just, <laughs> uh, I, I would not do it, but I'm glad that people do. This was in my 10% off sale that I was running in i believe february so this had a six dollar and fifty cent discount so it essentially sold for fifty eight dollars two more books over on etsy uh dictionary of the apostolic church volumes one and two both of these sold for 37.99 a piece so 75.98 again less the 10 percent. so call it 67 68 dollars plus $14.15 media mail shipping. These I picked up at an estate sale about a year ago. I paid a dollar a piece for these as well. They are massive, massive books. Uh, I had to cobble together two 14 by 10 by four boxes uh, just to get them in there. So these were massive, massive books. They're from the uh, 19 early 1900s. I think volume one was from 1916 and volume two was from 1918. So these were really old Covers were a little bit rough, pages were a little bit tanned, but they were intact. There were no damage to the spines and they sold for really solid money. And that seems like a great opportunity to take a moment to remind you that the way I'm able to do all that cross posting to Etsy and to Mercari as well is through the use of List Perfectly. I've talked about them on numerous occasions and why not remind you once again, how valuable I find my investment 
every month in List Perfectly to be. So uh, if you're not familiar, if this is your first time here and you've never heard anybody talk about List Perfectly, it is essentially a cross-listing tool. It's a Chrome or uh, Edge browser extension that allows you to cross-post from one site to another, or you can even host your inventory within their catalog. That's not something that I do, but it's really useful for a lot of folks. It's a fantastic tool. I'm on the business subscription, which is $49 a month. And as I've said before, it's one of the best investments I make every month. About 25% of my gross revenue comes from sites that I initially was not selling on. So uh, in particular, Etsy and Mercari. And the only way I can do that with 9,000 odd listings is through the automation of a tool like List Perfectly. So if you'd like to increase your sales, uh, consider taking a look at List Perfectly. If you'd like to do that, much as there was with Bonanza, there is an affiliate link in the show notes and the video description below where you can save 30% off your first month with List Perfectly. Use that link and the code GALAXY to get 30% off that first month. And if you do that, uh, that also helps support the channel because as an affiliate, as long as you stay subscribed, we get a little bit of a bonus back from List Perfectly. I'm not quite making enough just yet to pay for my monthly subscription, but it's pretty close, which is pretty outstanding. So again, shameless plug for List Perfectly. I, I think it's a terrific piece of software and it has helped me make literally thousands of additional dollars in revenue and profit. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. This was a cool old book, Florida, A Guide to the Southernmost State. This was put out by the WPA back in 1939. It was a first edition illustrated hardcover. This sold over on eBay for $64.99 plus media mail shipping. This was part of a big lot, that big 15,000 book lot that I've talked about here pretty regularly. So I own this thing for gosh, I had four and a half cents or something like that. So super low cost of goods sold on that $64.99 plus shipping. Uh, these next two are both from the consignment uh, situation with my brother. There was a huge lot of old vintage 1960s and early 1970s NASA kind of paper ephemera. So newsletters and brochures and photos and all kinds of stuff. And I've had several buyers that have made pretty substantial purchases of those items. This first one uh, is NASA Marshall Space Flight Center, NASA Facts, John F. Kennedy Space Center, uh, a, and a NASA Apollo Lunar Rover vehicle. It was a flyer from the company, I think it's Northrop Grumman, that built the Lunar Rover. Ultimately, there were six brochures in this lot. They went for a total on offers of $76.65. Somehow, some way, I'm not quite sure how they ended up with free shipping. <laughs> uh, I don't do free shipping anymore, so I'm not quite sure what went sideways there. Um, I don't know if anybody, or go off on a little bit of a tangent here, uses eBay's business policies, but I have had a real rash of problems with eBay moving listings from one policy to another just for no reason that I can come up with changing and editing my policies, adding new policies. I went into my shipping policies the other day and I had a, had it whittled down to about eight and I found I had 15, <laughs> most of which I had not created. So I tried to get things moved back around and maybe I moved these into the wrong one. But uh, if you use eBay's business policies, you might want to check on those once in a while because they seem to get a little bit out of control for some reason. This was another lot. I had a, uh, a customer that reached out to me individually about a bunch of those similar flyers. These were all NASA facts brochures, which were four to six page, like notebook sized brochures on various things at NASA from again, the sixties and seventies. They asked about 12 of them and asked, I was had them listed for nine 99 a piece said, if I bought 12 of them, could you do seven bucks each? And I said, well, yes, absolutely. I could do that. So 12 more of those NASA facts went out in one lot for $84. And I did actually offer free shipping on that because he was buying so many. Another book from my 16 cent a piece book lot, Somo Psychic Power, Using Its Miracle Forces for a Fabulous New Life by Frank Young. This was from 1974 one of those what was that book 
in the early 2000s, The Secret or something like that. It's one of those kind of, you know, how you can visualize and manifest and all that sort of stuff. Uh, a lot of these older ones do really, really well. This thing, again, from 16 cents brought 89.99 plus customer paid shipping. So that's probably one to kind of be on the lookout for. Somo Psychic Power using its miracle forces for a fabulous new life. I probably should have read it. <laughs> uh, this is another book from the big 15,000 book lot. So this is less than a nickel. Longest Deafness and Chloe by George Thornley. Uh, it was his translation from 1925. I believe it was a first edition illustrated. This sold over on Etsy for $99.99 plus customer paid shipping. It was in my 10% off sale. So essentially it went for $89.99. So another really nice book, uh, Longest Deafness and Chloe. I think it's old Greek literature, if I'm not mistaken. So that's one to kind of be on the lookout for. This is something that I owned myself. Uh, I am a big Spotify user. I've joked regularly when I actually closed my original CD store back in 2012 that I had gone to the dark side and signed up for Spotify. I love Spotify, but I was driving a vehicle that did not have any kind of touch screen or any way to really see what was being played. And Spotify developed this thing called the car thing, which was a really unfortunate name, but it was a really cool little device. When they initially came out, they were asking like 80 or 90 bucks for these things. So I did not get one because it was, I believe, overpriced and had an unfortunate name. They didn't really sell all that well. And ultimately, Spotify decided to close them out. They made they sent offers out to all the subscribers of Spotify to pick one of these things up for 29 bucks. So I went ahead and got one. Ultimately, I traded in the car that I was using this in, and the new car has Android Auto. So this was something I did not need anymore. And I, I really didn't know what to do with it, but I thought I would look them up on eBay just on the chance that they were selling. And holy cow. <laughs> Uh, so I started this thing at $29 on an auction, which is what I had in it. So I thought if I could do a little better than bust out of it, I'd be pretty happy with that. But I saw they were selling in some cases for 80, 90 and a hundred dollars. And this thing received, I think 12 bids and went all the way up to one Oh five fifty plus shipping. So my cost of goods sold essentially was the $30, $29. Uh, free shipping that I paid to buy the thing for myself. This is kind of a personal item sale, but uh, if you see one of these things on a table somewhere out in the wild, the Spotify car thing, uh, it's a touchscreen voice operated device, a really sweet little device. Uh, grab it if you can get it for a couple of bucks because they are still selling for huge money over on eBay. This is another item from my brother's consignment stuff. This was a Hewlett Packard Model 410B vacuum tube voltmeter. I didn't really have any way to test this. I plugged it in, it powered up, the lights lit up, the little needle went back and forth and everything seemed okay, but I still listed this as untested parts or repair only. I listed it at an auction, I think starting at $99.99. I got two bids and it sold for $129.99 plus customer paid. I think I sent this out priority in a large priority box. So it's about that size, 12 by eight, something like that. Interesting old, uh, I've sold a couple of old meters now. Not the other ones brought, you know, 25, 30 bucks. So they were not bad, but nothing like this. But if you see one of these things out there, uh, this was a tube, which made a big difference, I think made it a little, a little bit more valuable. Uh, HP, 410B vacuum tube voltmeter for $129.99. So this is an interesting one. These are all interesting, right, Ryan? You're just, everything is interesting. <laughs> I was at an estate sale. Oh, man, it has probably been two years ago. And in the basement was a giant box of American Jewish Archives Journals. So this is a magazine put out by the American Jewish Archive that details kind of the history of the Jewish people in America. Interesting magazines. They had a giant box of them. I asked the guy what he would take for the whole box and he said five bucks. And there were like, I don't know, there must have been 50 of them in there. So that seemed like a pretty good deal to me. 
So I bought them. I've been selling them here and there for $7.99, $5.99 a piece. And suddenly out of the blue, I had someone order every single one I had remaining. <laughs> Uh, the total ended up being 131.78 plus shipping. So from an initial investment of $5, I probably made $150 or $180 worth of sales out of it. Uh, really, really cool. They took a long time to sell. I'm not, I guess at that price, I probably would buy them again, but it's not something I would go looking for. But if I stumbled on another box of them that I could snap up for five bucks, I'd probably do it. Similar story on this one, American Cookery Magazine. So I bought a box of these at an estate sale again, probably about two years ago for $10. There were, I think, 63 or 64 of them in the box. And I had them listed individually for $9.99 plus shipping on Mercari. I had them listed, I believe, for $12 with free shipping because I don't, they don't offer media mail shipping. These magazines did not have ads in them, so they qualified for media mail shipping. So I had a customer that reached out to me and said, hey, I collect these things and I see you have a whole bunch of them. I usually pay between four and six dollars a piece for these. Would you take two hundred and fifty dollars with free shipping to sell all of them? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I would. I would do that. <laughs> uh, so another one. Uh, I've had them for a while. I sold a few. I had sold enough of them to kind of get my money out of it, but I wasn't really in much of a profit situation. Uh, and this person offered $250 for the remaining 58 issues of this. Same kind of thing. It's not something I would actively go seeking out, but if I found a box of them and I could get them for five or 10 bucks, I would absolutely buy them again. This was a cool sale. Uh, we're getting into some big ones here now. This is from the big lot of books that I bought again for about 16 cents a piece. This is a fairly recent purchase. Uh, this was pretty amazing. When it, Sometimes you look up a book and the initial price jumps out at you and you're like, that's got to be a mistake. And then you start digging a little deeper and you find that it is actually, they are really selling for this kind of money. So this was Second Wind, The Memoirs of an Opinion by Bill Russell and Taylor Branch from 1979. It was a, a hardcover. I believe it's Memoirs of an Opinionated Man, if I'm not mistaken. Etsy always cuts that off for some reason. Published in 1979, hardcover with its dust jacket, sold for $269.99, less the 10% off that I was running. So $27 off, so $242 from 16 cents. Absolutely incredible sale. Even if you're not a bookseller, if you're out and you happen to see this thing, Second Wind, The Memoirs of an Opinionated Man by Bill Russell, grab it. It is humongous money. Uh, this thing I shipped out priority mail. I bubble wrapped it, put cardboard around it and put more bubble wrap around it and uh, <laughs> tried to protect it as best I could. Uh, I did send this out with additional shipping insurance on it as well. But uh, $269.99 before the 10% discount. Just remarkable. And this will be the last one. This is kind of the, the flip of the week, flip of the year so far. This is from my brother's consigned lot as well. And it's actually a flip so nice I did it twice. So this is a vintage Marantz model 2240B stereophonic receiver. This is from probably the late 1960s or very early 1970s in really pretty decent physical condition, but it did have a few issues when I initially hooked it up. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see on the, if you're looking at it, the left-hand side, there's two meters over there that in this picture are both lit up. The first time I tested and sold this thing, only one of those meters lit up. The dial, AM FM dial, did light up. In this picture, you'll see that it does not. So here's what happened. I sold this thing almost immediately for $504 on a best offer. I had it listed for $599.99 plus shipping. Sold, I got an offer. I sold it for $504 and some change plus shipping. I shipped it out and UPS damn near destroyed the box. The guy sent me some pictures and the box was just absolutely trashed. And he was uncomfortable keeping the unit. He said that didn't appear that there was anything wrong with it. He just was concerned that there might be, and he didn't want to mess with it. 
I agreed to take it back. So he shipped it back to me. And when I plugged it in upon receiving it, it worked a little bit differently. I did verify that it was actually the same unit. The serial numbers matched. He didn't, he didn't try to pull a fast one and send me something different. The unit still worked. It powered on. It played music. The, the AM FM tuner worked and everything. But this time, the AM FM dial lights were out, but both meter lights were on. So I'm not quite sure. I assume from all the jostling around, something got shook loose and something got shook back into joint. I don't know what happened, but the unit ultimately was working in a reasonable fashion. I listed it as, as is again, parts are repair only because I knew there were some things that were going to need to be done to it. I again, listed it for $599.99 or best offer, got an offer again, literally within hours for $509.99 plus shipping, went ahead and took that, sent it out again, this time to their credit. UPS did not destroy the box. The guy got it. He is a, I guess he's a tech guy. He actually repaired it and sent me a message that he was so happy with the condition, the physical condition of the unit. And he did some upgrades and it is working perfectly. So I have talked on this show on numerous occasions about how I have mixed feelings about electronics because I don't always like taking the time to pack and ship and test and do all that. In this case, it was definitely worth doing $509.99 plus shipping. So again, one I made 65% on. <laughs> uh, so I made about 300 bucks, give or take on this thing after all the fees and everything. We'll take that all day long. So that's going to put a wrap on this week's episode. That was a lot of what sold action. Uh, 18 odd items and the best of what I've sold so far in 2022. As I talked about last week, January was my best month ever. February was my best February ever. March is not off really to that great of a start, but uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with how 2023 has gone. You can let me know down in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube, how your 2023 is going. Are you doing well? Is business good? Is business not quite so good? Uh, or you can, of course, email me at galaxycds at gmail.com or message me over on Instagram at galaxycdsrocks. If you got something out of today's episode or you just thought it was entertaining and I'm a charming guy, uh, do me a favor and whack that thumbs up button. If you're not currently a subscriber to the channel, or a follower of the podcast, please consider doing that as well. There are handy little buttons somewhere down below that you can click in order to do that. With all that being said, I hope everybody is having a productive 2023 and that you're all doing well. And now it's time to sell. Thanks, guys. You have been listening to the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will catch you again next time.